What's going on everybody? My name is Carmine and this is Bar Mines Tech and today we're going to talk about how you can start your own home lab server for under $150. So let's get right into it. So a couple weeks ago I had this great idea of using these little mini PCs to build a home lab server. Um, a couple months ago I built my actual own server. It's a full tower. It's a EATX actually and it's huge. It's loud and it sucks a lot of power. And at work we use these little mini PCs for certain tasks and I thought these would be perfect to run a server off of. They're small, they have a good amount of hardware in them and I think they're perfect for what the job is. So I started looking through eBay and I actually found this one and I tried bidding on it but I ended up losing the bid. So after about another week of looking I moved over and I found this one. So this is the actual little mini PC I'm running. It didn't come with a hard drive so I bought one of those and I had to buy a power supply. So I bought the power supply for 10 bucks I think this was about 65 after shipping, and the hard drive was a cheap, crucial SSD off of Amazon for about $30. So altogether, I'm still under my $150 budget. So to go along with this, we're going to use Proxmox, which is an open source virtualization software. So we can install it on the mini PC, our new server, and we can spin up some VMs and some other stuff to practice with for our home lab. So to start, you would go over to Proxmox's website and they offer a, a lot of different kinds of software but the one we're looking at is virtualization so you would come down you would click download and then you would find the download that you want so there are some different ones so we want to use the Proxmox VE so that's their virtual environment and you would find whichever download or install you want to run it's probably your easiest one it's a simple ISO after you download it and get it, you need to write it to a flash drive so you can actually run the installer onto your drive, onto your new machine. So I use Etcher, simple enough. You would just click flash from file, find your file. You would find a drive that you want to flash it to and then you would flash it. It makes it so you can actually install the software onto your targeted machine that you want to finish with. So now that we have all that set, let's move over to actually configuring and installing Proxmox. So now that we're on our Proxmox box, I've already moved over and I made the installer run. So we can actually start with the installation process. So after you get the installer up and running, this is the first screen you're gonna see, it's just an agreement. So you're gonna click, I agree. You're gonna select what you want. So we're gonna use this hard drive if you only have one hard drive like I do, it's only going to show you one hard drive and we're going to leave the default settings because I think those are good enough. We'll click next. We have our country and then we're going to find our state. Uh, I live in New York. You of course could put yours and you could put your preferred keyboard layout. I do the US English layout so I'm going to use that one. After that we're going to come over, we're going to use a password. So this is going to be your password for your actual login to your node. So make sure it's something you're going to remember. And then you use an email. So I'll just put my email in there. And we'll click next again. Uh, oh, and make sure your password match. Uh, we'll try that again. All right, so this time, so now they work. So now we're going to detect our network. Uh, it looks like it did detect my network, so we're going to give it a host name, and it's very important when you give it a host name, you give it something that's not going to actually resolve to a domain. So I'm going to use uh, barmindtech.local. Uh, so I'm using .local, so it shouldn't be able to resolve that domain to anything. And it looks like I gave it an address, and it hit my DNS server and my gateway, so we're set. So DHCP worked for this. And click next again. We're going to confirm our settings and if I can find my, there it is. And we're going to click install. So now it's going to actually install uh, Proxmox onto the hard drive so we could actually use it as our server. So we'll give this some time and when it finishes installing we'll be right back. Alright and now that our Proxmox installation is about to finish up as long as everything went good it should prompt us to restart the system and let's see if that happens. I think we should be good. Let's see. Any second now. There we go. 
All right, so now it told us that the installation was successful and it's going to automatically reboot. So there's our system rebooting and we'll watch Proxmox be able to snap in. When it does this, I'm not going to touch anything. I'm going to let it automatically run Proxmox on its own. Okay, so after this installation finishes, it's going to give us this message saying to move over to this website, which is now going to be, it's not really a website, but it's the IP address that our Proxmox node is running at. So after we do that, we're going to move over to the browser. So here we are back in the original browser I was using before, and we're going to go to HTTPS, colon, slash, slash, the IP address that was assigned to your node. Uh, I think it was, there we go. Uh, so it's going to be 237 for me, and then we're going to use colon 8006, so it knows to forward it to the right port for our node. So for me, this is my IP address for my server, but yours is most likely going to be different. So make sure you double check before you go to move over. Uh, I already did the login, so we'll do it one more time because I made an oopsies. So we're going to log out. So every time you come over to Proxmox, you're going to hit this login screen. So your default login is root. And then the password is whatever password you gave it during the installation. So now we're going to log in. Every time you log into Proxmox, it's going to tell you you don't have a valid subscription. And we don't. So it's not what we need to worry about. Proxmox is free. And the subscription is for the Enterprise Edition. So if you're going to run Enterprise Environment and you want to have support for your environment, then you would buy the subscription. But we're not going to. This is our dashboard for Proxmox. So every time we log in, this is what we're going to see. Our data center is if we have multiple nodes. So these are going to show all of our servers in our data center. And here's our server we just made. So here's bar mine tech. So if I drop it down, it's going to show us our, sto our storage, our local. And then we also have this second set of storage, which is what we're going to end up using for our virtual machines. So if I come back over here to bar mine tech, we're going to see our summary. So it's going to give us our system information. So my server has been up for four minutes. It has four cores of a CPU. We have about seven and a half gigs of RAM to use. And this is my boot drive for my actual server. So I have a hundred gigs for my, for my boot drive. There's some more stuff in here, but we're not going to worry about it right now because we're not working with it. So how about we move over and we set it up so we can get our first ISO image to make our first virtual machine. So we're going to come over here to our local. Uh, it's going to be our regular one. You'll see it gives us an option to give us ISO images. So we're going to click here. You can either upload one if you already have one, or we could download from a URL. I already have my ISOs for all the, the images I want to use, so we're just going to use this option. I'm going to click Upload. I'm going to select my file. We're going to go over to my drive that has my ISO images. And we're going to get Ubuntu 20.04. I'll use this one. This is my most recent one. I downloaded this back in June. And we're going to upload it. So now we could use it to make virtual machines. So we'll give us a minute to finish up. And then we'll move over to in making our first virtual machine. So now that our upload of the ISO image is done, you'll always see whenever Proxmox is doing a task, it'll tell you task OK. And that means that the task that you were working on is now finished. So we can close this window out. Now we have the Ubuntu 2004 ISO image that we need. So we can actually go over and we can make our first VM. So to make our first VM, we're going to come over to create VM. We're going to select our node that we want to use. So we only have one node, so that's what we're going to use. And we're going to call this Ubuntu. So your VM ID is going to just match up for the actual identification number. So if you worked in the shell of Proxmox, this ID would be more important. But we're going to use the GUI because it's a little bit easier to learn with. So you can just name it whatever you want to name the virtual machine. We're going to select our OS. So it's going to give you a drop down of, in my case, only one because I only have one drive that can store ISO images. So I'm going to select my local, we'll select Ubuntu, and then we'll click next again. These we're not going to touch because we're not using any of these different options, so we're going to click next again. 
and then we can select the information that we want here. So I'm going to leave it at, I'm going to give it 40 gigs, I think, for this machine. I have a little bit of room on the drive, and let's see what we're going to mess around with. So I'm going to give it 40 gigs, and everything else we're going to leave the same. CPU, I'm going to give it one, one core. You don't want to change your sockets unless you have a dual socket board. In my case, I don't. I have a one socket motherboard for this PC, and I only have four cores, so I'm going to give it one core to start with. And if we need, we can always add more in the future because these are virtual machines. Click next again. And I'll give it two gigs of RAM. So remember, every gig of RAM is 1,024 megabytes. So this is going to give us two gigs of RAM. And we'll click next again. And we're going to leave the default options once again. We'll click confirm. Double check everything looks good. And then we'll click finish. And if we give it a second, here is our new VM that's coming up over here. And if we give it another second, it should be coming up. And here we are. So now it gives us our name for our VM, and we can actually click on it. We look at the, this little like summary of it. It's not currently running, so we're going to turn it on. So here's our start button. We always have this shut down, and then we can also console into it over here. And now you can see it gives us a little change because now it's using, it's turning on, so it's powering through its hardware. So we'll give it a second, and then you can access your machine's console right out of the GUI for Proxmox, which is really convenient. So we're going to come over here. And as this loads up, it's going to give us the screen. So we're going to install Ubuntu. And we'll give it some time to get working. So after the original startup of the installer, it's going to cycle through some screens. And it's going to give uh, some different text on the screen. And we're just going to leave it until we get to this point. So we're going to go through. We're going to select our language. Mine is English, so I'm going to use English. Uh, I'm going to continue without updating. We're going to use the English layout. We're going to run Ubuntu server. And it's going to give us our IP address for our virtual machine. So our virtual machine's IP is always going to be different than our actual Proxmox IP. So as we can see, it's going to give me .50.60. So we'll keep that in mind. We're going to click done. We're not going to give it a proxy address. We're not going to give it a mirror address. And the biggest thing, I learned this the hard way with my first couple of VMs, we don't want an LVM group. So we're going to scroll over to this option, we're going to click the space bar, and we're going to uncheck this option. We want to use the entire boot disk. Trying to expand the LVM disk is a pain, and unless you're very comfortable with it, and you've done it before, I don't recommend doing this option. We're going to click done. We're going to give a little summary of what's going on. We're going to click done again. Click continue. We're going to give it a name. So my name's Carmine. Our server name will be Ubuntu for now. We're going to give it a username, and give it a password. Click done again. I do want to give it SSH, so we'll do that. Scroll down, hit done again. Uh, I don't want to give it any of these add-ons right now, so we're going to click done again. And now it's going to process the install, and it's actually going to install our OS on the VM. So installing on the OS onto the VM is just like if you were actually making a, a standalone Ubuntu box. Um, I haven't. I always use virtual machines because it's just easier and I have the servers too. Uh, this is going to take some time, probably about five minutes. So we're going to come back when this is all done and we'll finish this up. All right. And after a few minutes, we'll finally get the message saying we can reboot now. So we're going to come into our machine. We're going to click reboot now. And it's going to scroll through and it's going to pop up a whole bunch of text on the screen again. And it's going to reboot the machine. Now, for whatever reason, in the VM on Proxmox, you might get this message saying failed to unmount the CD-ROM. Just click enter and it will pass through. Don't worry. Don't worry. There's nothing wrong with the install. Uh, it's just, I think, some issue with Proxmox. I have it on all of my servers and my VMs. So let's give it some time. It's going to reboot our machine. And give it another second. And here we are. Now it's rebooting into our machine again. Any day now. Uh, it's just doing all its, its original boot up. So here we are. And if I click enter one more time, we're going to see Ubuntu login. So you use your credentials you set in the installer. Um, I type my password wrong. Let's try this again. And here we are. Now we're on our machine. Uh, if you can see, it 
doesn't give us our IP address so if you don't want to use the console because it is a little bit of a hassle in the web browser you can click IP A and it's going to give us all of the Ethernet connections that it has so we're going to look for the IP address it's going to be 192.168.50.60 again this is for my machine your machine is going to be different I prefer to use PuTTY but if you have another uh, software you prefer to SSH into your machines with go ahead and use it I'm going to type in my IP address for my machine and we're going to connect now this message is going to come up every time you connect to a machine for the first time it's telling you that it doesn't recognize it and if it's okay to connect you can make this full screen I want to log in again and anytime you start off with a new machine I always recommend doing an update and an upgrade so we're going to do sudo apt update we're going to give it our password and we need to do it because this is a system function so we can't do it as a regular user this is making sure that all the, the repositories for the machine are up to date so now we can run a sudo apt upgrade and we're going to give it a tack y so it automatically knows to do it so this might take another minute instead uh, it's a little bit longer than the update because it has to actually find all the packages in the linux machine and upgrade them to the current one. So we'll give this a minute's upgrade and we'll be right back when it's done. So as we can see right here, it gives us our status and our upgrade is about to finish. So our, our new virtual machine is gonna be all up to date and ready to start working with. So if it, here we go, it should be done. Any second now, let's get it going. And here we go, come on, finish up. It's always fun. It's always fun waiting for these things to load up. So we'll give it another site. And here we go. Okay, so now it's finished updating. And it's going to give us our screen. It's going to ask us what services need to be restarted. We haven't changed any of our services. So I'm just going to click OK. We're going to give it whatever the default options are. We'll click OK. It's going to tell us that it's all done, and here we are. So now we can get rid of all this mess on the, on the screen. We're going to type clear, click enter, and all that's gone. So now our our new VM is all up to date. It's ready to get used. So we made a server. We have our server. We made our first virtual machine, and we're running. So now we're all set. We're going to start home lab, and now we have our machine. We have everything we need. So now in the next video, we're going to do our first application to run on our new virtual machine off our server for our home lab so again we're making our old server for under 150 dollars and it's going to be the first step you need to get into home lab especially if you want to work in it or you're a student or you're just somebody who always liked tinkering with computers and you want a little project doing this is great it is a low buy-in and as one of my friends say it's it's your tuition and instead of going to school and paying all this money you could go buy a simple computer I mean, under $100, I bought mine, and I'm going to learn everything I need to do off of it. So, we're going to come back in the next video. We're going to work with some stuff I feel should be the first project you do in your home lab, and we'll get going from there. So, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe, because we're going to have plenty more videos on how to home lab, and we're going to go from there. So, see you later.